there, how's everybody doing? This is the next video, and this is gonna be um, going over page nine, and then I'll look at page 10 with you just to give you some reminders on that. We spent a lot of time factoring, so I am hoping that you remember it, and it was on most of our salmon sheets as well. Um, remember, you can still correct any of those from this past marking period. I will take them, I will take them, I will take them. All right, and then you can um, snap a picture, send it to me through your email if you have that avail availability. You can also scan them if you are fancy smancy at your house and you can do that all right so if you look at the steps for factoring when you have a number in front of x squared remember the first thing we always look for is is there a GCF so if there's a GCF then you want to take that out but on this page none of them have GCFs the first one has a 7 a 1 and a 6 so nothing can come out there and I look at an x squared an x and something that doesn't have an x so if you look at that, what we started to do is we would take that first number there. And if you can see, we would circle that. That's step one, and that's our slip. So we're going to slip. And when we do that, then on the side, I am going to write the number that I'm slipping and putting it on the outside with a little division sign next to it. And then I'm gonna rewrite it so it says x squared plus x minus, and I'm writing 42. The reason why it's 42 is because I take that seven, I slip it and multiply it times the negative six, which gives me negative 42, okay? Then I have to do AM factoring. So I'm going to say what multiplies to give me a negative 42 that adds to give me a positive one. We can take our calculator, type in the Y equals, and in here I can take negative 42 and divide that by X. Hoping you can see that. And I can hit second graph, my graph button, is the one that's right here. And then I'm gonna get a table. And when I get that table, I'm looking for pairs of numbers that when I add them together, it adds to give me a positive one. So when I do that, I'm gonna come on down here, and I'm gonna highlight it, hopefully you can see. I notice that seven plus negative six gives me a positive one, okay? So those are my two numbers that I'm gonna use, positive seven minus six they go in there, just like we do regular AM. But remember in class, I kept saying, don't stop here, we have to keep going. So we're gonna take that division sign, and now that we're gonna do step two, the divide part. So we take all this, and we're gonna divide by seven. We're gonna take that division sign, put it underneath there, and then I'm actually going to, and remember in class we would use the math frac button, and we would say seven divided by seven, that way we know we gave us one. I would take the six divided by seven, and if you math frac it, it comes out as six over seven. So then what I have to do next is I'm going to take the seven that's under here, and this is my slide step because this doesn't give me anything nice and neat. It stays in a fraction when I use math frac, and I'm gonna rewrite that there in front of the X, and here is my answer, okay? So remember, we did slip multiply, write it over here to remind you to divide. Our divide step is here. We math fracked it to make sure that nothing could be reduced or could just be div divided evenly. Then I take this, and I'm gonna do my slip divide, there's my slide. My seven's gonna slide in front of that X, and there's my final answer, okay? So I'm gonna leave numbers two and three for you guys to do. And then we're gonna look on the back. So if you look on page 10, those are our factoring completely. So I know I keep saying the same thing, but it's true, when we do our factoring completely, we wanna make sure that we are always going to do, the first step is always looking for a GCF. So you always wanna go through, like the first one on the page for question four, it says three X squared minus 30 X plus 48. I wanna go through and say, is there a GCF between three, 30, and 48? 
if you remember in class, one of the tips that I would give you would be to um, take the smaller number, which is three, and divide it into the other two numbers. So I would take the 30 and divide by that by three, that gave me 10. And then I would check, does 48 divide by three? If it comes out nice and neat like these guys did, then I've got it. So my GCF is the first thing I pull out, which is three. Now, remember, sometimes a GCF can be a variable. So it can be a letter. This time, I only have an X squared and an X, and my last term doesn't have one, so I don't have to take that out. I'm gonna rewrite the GCF in front and I'm actually gonna divide it out. So when I do that, I'm left with x or three on the outside, I'll show you this in a second, x squared minus 10x plus 16. Hopefully you can see it in pencil. But that's only factoring one time. So then this is where we would cover up the outside and say, okay, I need to factor that again. What kind of factoring can I do when I have three terms no GCFs are left, and I don't have a number directly next to this because the parentheses blocking it, well then that means I can do AM factoring, my trinomial factoring. So I'm gonna drop down that three and make sure that I keep it there. The GCF has to always live out front. And then I'm gonna do that AM factoring, and if you remember, this is where we went back into the Y equals. I hit the Y equals button, which is right here. It'll take you to this screen. I'm gonna take 16 and divide it by X because that's the term that I wanna figure out what multiplies to give me 16. And then I'm gonna hit the second and the button way over here, the graph button. That brings me to my table. And when I'm in this step, I wanna know what adds to give me negative 10. So I'm gonna go through there and I'm gonna figure out that when I'm looking at that, Hopefully you can see, I recognize that negative two plus negative eight gives me negative 10. So then I'm gonna use those two and this is going to be my final answer. And this is what I'm talking about. You can't let go of your GCF. That GCF has to drop down, has to stay with it. Okay, so try those other two on your own. Um, and then I'm gonna look down at the solving equations ones as well. So your goal is to get whatever letter is in these, this section by itself. So the first one has an A. So we're trying to get A by itself. When you're looking at that first one though, it has parentheses in there. So this uses our PEMDAS. If you remember in our yellow folder, I think I listed all the PEMDAS steps for you. So if you can remember where that is or you have your math stuff, hopefully it's there for you. But remember parentheses are the first thing that we want to get rid of. When I'm looking at this, I'm just gonna grab a different color. I am going to remember that the number that I'm multiplying through I need to take that negative sign in front. So for this one, all right, I'm gonna let it focus. There we go. So this one, I have a negative four. I'm gonna multiply it and multiply it. So when I do that, I'm gonna recopy the 8a down. I'm gonna take negative four times negative 5a to get a positive 20a. And then I'm gonna take negative four times negative eight to get a positive 32. <coughs> and then it equals 12a. So this is kind of like back to what we were doing on, the, on one of the first or second pages of this review pack. Because now all I need to do is look at the um, side over here and I'm gonna combine like terms. So because I have an 8a and a 20a, I'm gonna circle around those, although they're not the greatest circles. Those two are gonna go together. And then my plus 32 is gonna stay alone. So that gives me 20a plus 32 equals 12a. And then now, unfortunately, I have a on one side and a on the other side. So I need to get the a's together. When I do this, I wanna move my A over here because I don't wanna be left with zero on this side. That's what would happen if I took that over there. 
So I am going to subtract 28A, and when I subtract 28A, I am getting 32 on one side, and then I have negative 16A on the other side. Well, I still don't have A alone. My goal is always to get that letter alone. So I'm going to take this negative 16, and remember, when they're next to each other, touching like that, that means we're multiplying. In order to get it away from that, I do the opposite, and that's division. I'm dividing through by negative 16, and when I do that, I have negative two. There are a lot of steps to remember in that one, okay? Um, I wanna go down and remind you how to do number six, so if you can look at six with me next. That one is fractions. So remember, I will say it on camera and I will be on YouTube saying icky poo-poos, we don't like fractions, remember? So what we're gonna do is try to get rid of the denominators. Just to get rid of the denominators, you're gonna multiply the fractions by the bottom. So I'll show you what I mean by that, I'll remind you. Sorry, let me get it lined up. Yikes, there we are. So I took the bottom denominator is 35, and I multiplied it by both of these. So when I do that, and I'm gonna do it in a different color so you can see what happens. These guys are going to cross out, leaving me with m minus five on one side. And when I multiply the five sevenths times seven, I'm just touching the top. I'm left with m minus five equals 175 over seven. All I did was then these two top and bottom cross out, and then I take that, and that's five times 35, and in my calculator I got 175. Seven's gonna stay. But, icky poo poo, I still have another fraction. So I'm gonna take this, and I'm gonna multiply both sides by seven. Now, remember when you do this, <clears throat> On this side, I'm gonna multiply the m by seven and the negative five by seven. So then on my one side, my seven on the bottom and seven on the top are gonna to cancel out. That's gonna leave me with seven m minus 35 on the one side equals 175. And then now to get m by itself, I first have to move the 35 onto the other side. And when I do that, I get 210. So here's where I'm at right now. All I did was I took the 35 here, which was negative, do the opposite, which is adding. I'm gonna add it on both sides, and that gives me 210. But I still don't have M alone, so I have to take this 7M. I was multiplying when they're next to each other like that, we're multiplying. I need to do the opposite, which is divide. So I'm gonna divide by seven, divide by seven, and that is how I got m to equal 30. All right, don't stress over this. Do your best, try them. If you want me to look at them, I would love to. Snap a picture, send them to me. Um, we'll set up a good system to get this done uh, in a little bit, but right now that's where we're at. Thanks for watching and I hope to talk to you soon.